Thank you. Good afternoon. This is Chairwoman Makita Scott. I call to order the meeting of the Board of Education of Baltimore County for Tuesday, August 24th, 2021. This evening's Board of Education meeting is being held in person and by phone by board members streaming live through Microsoft Teams and broadcast on BCPS TV, Comcast Xfinity Channel 73, Verizon Files Channel 34. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this evening will be done by roll call vote. The first item of this afternoon's meeting from 4 to 5 p.m. is part one of the work session on the fiscal year 2023 state budget, excuse me, state capital budget request. And for that, I call on Dr. Scriven, Mr. Dixit, and Mr. Saris. Thank you. So good afternoon, Madam Chair, Dr. Williams and members of the board, both here in person and virtually. Uh, today we are here to conduct our work session with respect to the 2023 capital budget. I'm joined today by Mr. Pete Dixit, our executive director over facilities and strategic planning, and we have received uh, a litany of, of questions that we have responded, which I, I do believe you all have copies of those. Uh, at this point, we are prepared to respond or review or clarify any questions that you may have based on the responses that we've provided. And if able, uh, there's a willingness to answer any additional questions. Uh, that you may have. So, Madam Chair, I will turn it over to you for your facilitation and we're ready to uh, proceed. Great, thank you. So I would ask um, board members in those who are in person just to um, hold up this little red um, item right here so that I can properly recognize each of you. And um, on the phone, um, Mr. Um, Kuhn and Ms. Hen, I guess you will just have to vocalize to let me know um, if you'd like to ask a question. It looks like our first question is from Mr. Offerman. Yes, uh, Mr. Dixit, I think the proper person to ask. Uh, if, uh, it's about Towson High School, okay? If we're going to a, if we're, it, what would the cost be of building a 600 seat addition as well as the full uh, renovation compared to the expected cost of uh, building a new building. So thank you for your question. Uh, we do not have cost estimate of a building that has not been designed, but I can share with you some of the costs that we incurred for similar projects in the past. Okay. So, and all projects are unique. They have different requirements. Right. So the renovations that we have done, renovation and additions, they have been, the construction cost have been around 50, $60 million. And the project cost have been around 70, $75 million. So that's a good estimate, but that's not really the cost for Towson because they, we have not looked at it. We haven't designed it. So am I correct in saying that based on just the estimates, and I, and I understand this is not you know, specific and direct, yeah. uh, we're sending $130 million to, uh, to both renovate and put an addition on Towson High School. Is, is, is that approximately correct? So if we are going to build a school of that size, a new replacement school, yeah. that costs a lot more. That cost will be around the number that you said. Okay. We don't have the numbers for Towson High, so I don't want to mislead anybody that I have the cost estimate. But renovation depends on what we find during our design and investigation. And past renovations have been $50, $60 million. That included uh, a lot of work that was needed in the building. But, 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 uh, if, and I don't mean to stress this much, but how about the, uh, but am I correct in saying that a new building that would house, uh, that would allow us to have classrooms for six, 600 kids would be a bit, is, is that, is that 60,000 or 
hard to say that at this point. It's hard to say at this point. Okay. So I wouldn't want to mislead anybody. Right. If you look at the feasibility numbers that have been shared, that are a lot higher than that number that I just gave you. And part of the reason is that in renovation, we find creative ways of reducing cost, but we find more of that when we get into design. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Mack? Oh, thank you, Ms. Scott. Um, Mr. Dixit, I have the feasibility study here to the point that Mr. Offerman was making. When I compare, I'm talking about Towson right now. So when I compare the three options, um, the first bullet under each one of the options says total building after renovation, uh, and it provides a square footage. And in every case, the square footage stays the same, 279,409 square feet. That's correct. So for the costs that are provided in the feasibility studies, it doesn't include a 600 seat addition. addition. And am I, am I correct? So feasibility study is required by state. And when we, when we apply for state funding, they ask to do a feasibility study to find out what is the most cost effective option and they want us to compare apple to apple. So the square footage that you are seeing, that's perhaps the square footage that the school is eligible for state funding. The, the square foot that happens in the end, it could be more, it could be less. It depends on the needs of the educational program and the spaces required for that program. So in a lot of cases in the past, our team of architects have been able to provide that educational program in lesser space. And that's why you see the cost of renovation in addition to be less than that. But am I correct in an apples to apples comparison? Um, the executive summary done for Towson High School indicates that the difference between a new Towson High School and a renovated Towson High School is $9,969,477. Am I correct that I read? I mean, I took it right out of the feasibility study. Yeah. So feasibility study, you will also find there a life cycle costing. Mm -hmm. So state's requirement is to compare apple to apple. And their also requirement is to do a life cycle costing. And if life cycle cost is less for 40 year period, then they do not participate in renovation. And that's where we want board to understand what that means. So if you allow me a few minutes, I'll go over so that you understand. Thank you. So if you take, and let's get off Towson or Delaney, let me for the sake of communication, simplify that exercise so that you understand why is feasibility study done and what are the cost implications. <laughs> so if you take a typical school, um, any school, uh, and, and let's say the cost is $120 million of school, $120 million for their school. Then you take a, the same school and the cost of renovation is about $60 million. And I'm just totally giving you a hypothetical number, so for the sake of record, I want to be clear that I'm not talking about any school. No, I understand. So state participation in Construction of school is about 61%. So for the sake of ease and communication, I'll round it off to 60%. So if you take a $60 million school, which renovation addition that state has approved because of the feasibility study, the state share will be $36 million and county share will be $24 million. That's can I clarify that that's on a $60 million renovation? Is that's that what you're saying? That's on a $60 million. So and we can change the number to any number that you like later on. So okay? 36 is the state. 36 is the state and county is $24 million. Okay. The same school, if, we, if it's brand new, and this feasibility study doesn't justify replacement, 
and if it costs $120 million, which is a reasonable number for any school, then state share will still be what they would have given us for renovation minus a 15% penalty. So that number comes down to about $30 million or $31 million. The county has to put rest of the number there, rest of the amount, which is going to be around $90 million or $89.4 million. So the county share has increased by $65 million for the same school. If we do it at two schools, it'll be about $130, $120 million. Now this is all of county money. Am I communicating to this point? I, I, perfectly, thank you. Okay, I want to go one more step. So this county money is used to leverage state funding. And the same 60 or 40% that we talked about earlier, this 120 or $130 million, or you can reduce it to 100 million if you want to, that is the leveraging for state funds. So that will mean a net loss of another 100 to $120 million state fund that we cannot get. So what also that means is there's a loss of $220 million or $210 million from our capital program. Now that's just sucking the oxygen out of the entire capital program. And what that means to the rest of the program is that the same money can be used for the rest of the system. And $200 million at 50, 60, $70 million renovation will mean four high school or maybe 20, 30, 40 systemic project. Or in case of my past study that recommends Esparos Point and that recommends New Northeast High School, that's enough money to take care of both of them. So a vote in favor of a new school that is not justified by, by feasibility study, what board will be voting for is about the money for Sparrows Point and about the money for New Northeast High School. And I wanted that to be very clear. Um, I do have a follow-up question. Um, I spent the afternoon looking at the information I had gathered when I first came to the board on the SAGE um, high school capacity study. What, if anything, did we do with that information that we paid $200,000 for? You mean the SAGE study? The high school capacity study. Yeah. That was only information. To my knowledge, we did not use it for anything, but I can find out more about it. And if we use that, uh, I, I can share that with you. But that was helpful information. We have done a couple of studies in the last five, 10 years. Uh, the recommendations have been somewhat similar, somewhat identical. Uh, this study is a lot more deeper, the new study of Canon Design. This has been done over a period of 18 months, 15 months. It has gone into not only capacity, in condition, adequacy and equity, and massive public participation. So if so, we spend that kind of money, I think we should listen to them before we change our decision. I just have one more point. I will note that on all seven options, there were dis differences on each of the seven options provided by the SAGE capacity group, but where there was consistency was that um, in, in every option provided, a new school was recommended for Towson. Yeah. So I don't know whether they had the benefit of feasibility study, but if, if we are going to participate in state funding, feasibility study is a state requirement. And I showed you, shared with you the impact of dollars, uh, loss of state dollars and additional county dollars. Thank okay. you, Mr. Dixit. Thank you for those questions. Yes, thank you. So it looks like we have a question from Ms. Joes, then Ms. Pastor, then Mr. Offerman. Ms. Pastor is before you. I apologize. Yes, Ms. Pastor. Thank you. Mr. Dixit, first, I need you to repeat something that you said as you were responding 
to um, Ms. Mack because she went on to her next question and what you said about the new Northeast High School, that just sort of passed very quickly. So will you repeat that because I, I've looked at these numbers and looked at this in a nauseam and I think that's an important piece, but I want to hear you talk about that. So I'll try if I miss anything, let me know because I was just going by my memory. Mm -hmm. uh, the point I was trying to make is so that everybody understand it because what I heard in this conversation <clears throat> is a lot of passion. What I heard is also a lot of misinformation and myths. So I wanted to take this opportunity to clarify it. Everybody wants a new school. Mm -hmm. We want new school. Facilities folks are the first one to want a new school. But there's limited funding, and that funding can only go so far. As I see, and this is after 52 years of professional experience, that this is golden opportunity for us to fix the system forever or keep doing the things that we did in the past. County funds are extremely valuable in fixing the system, and they are extremely valuable in getting Built to Learn Act money, the additional funds. If we don't use them judiciously to take care of our problem and go by myths and misinformation, we'll miss this opportunity. We'll miss that, this opportunity for Sparrows Point, for New Northeast School, and for so many, so many other schools all over the system. And my IPAS has uh, shared that with you in detail, a lot more detail than I can. Okay, thank you. And, and that's what I wanted to hear again because I only missed one My iPass meeting. So I've heard all of the conversation and I wanted to hear you again articulate that if we go one route, we lose the new Northeast High School. That's we right. miss having Sparrows Point separated yes. so that it can stop being a, a, a dinosaur yes. in all ways. Okay. And, so and I, these are just some of the schools I gave you example. The impact is all over the system. We have programmatic issues that my IPAS has detailed. Mm -hmm. And while we may disagree with some of their findings, um, they appear to be uh, doing a nice job in identifying issues. Sparrow's point being one of the issues they identified that was not identified as clearly in the previous studies. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have to give them credit for that. And, and, if, and that, go uh, ahead. I'm sorry. No, if I could just interject real quick, Mr. Dixit, where I think you need to reiterate is that the feasibility study, who was that requested by and why? and then revisiting the 15% that he alluded to and the other financial repercussions if we opted to move um, a different direction than what was recommended as a result of that, that study. You, so if, if we could just yeah. reiterate that, because I, I think we hit high level, but we need to drill down how we did for Ms. Smith. So that's a good point. Um, if you remember last year, board approved replacement of those two schools. We moved it forward to planning board, and planning board always listened to us. Superintendent's team uh, has built a credibility over a period of time. So when we take something to them, uh, they listen to us. For the first time, they said that a feasibility study is required before they approve any of this. Feasibility study generally was done during the design development stage and not this early stage. So county provided us with the funds uh, to do those feasibility studies even before the design funding was approved. And the results of the feasibility study is that based on life cycle costing, uh, it is more cost effective to renovate and, addition, and, and add the building. Well, and with that, my, this is the next piece of my question, because the Northeast knew Sparrows Point so that we can have a high school and a middle school, and they're not all on top of each other, as I said, dinosaur. But I would like you to just paint the picture for us, the, the most accurate picture you can, that um, 
talks to the needs of those two schools or any schools in terms of getting a new building and a renovation, because it seems that uh, just as I look at some of the email, that sometimes people think that some of the most egregious issues, uh, both externally and internally in a particular school, won't be handled if there's a renovation. Um, and I've seen beautiful work, and certainly you know it better than I do, but I've seen work in the district, which I serve, uh, as the, the constituents that I have, that have been renovations. And there's been external, great external work where it was needed as well as internal. So just in terms of these projects, can you just give us a little bit more light on the kinds of things that would happen if there were renovations versus new buildings, or that wouldn't happen if it's a renovation versus a new building? So I, I think I got your question, so let me, let me try to answer that. So there is a notion prevailing out there that any renovation is a Band-Aid type of renovation, and that's not true. So I saw in some communication that you did replace 1926 building, uh, but now you are talking about renovation of 1926 building. You didn't replace that. So every building is in different condition, and it has nothing to do with the age. Every building has a different type of educational program. And when, when architects and engineers get into that building, they look at what systems need improvement, what addition is needed to satisfy capacity, and what, uh, what, what building needs are for any building. So any renovation will meet the same building codes whether it's renovation or new building. A very classic example is Bloomsbury, Catonsville Elementary School. That was done at half the cost of most of the other elementary school. And I and our team and the community are very proud of that building. Nobody can tell us that this is any less than any other elementary school. We did a similar renovation uh, at uh, Stone, uh, Stonely, you know, and that, that renovation addition is a beautiful building. You can compare it to any, any new elementary school. And this, this is an old argument that renovation is not as good as new, and that is not true. It is cost effective, and in case of old architectural buildings, it brings life, and you create gem for the community. Did I answer your question? Yes, you I can do. go on and on, you know. No, because no, no, no. You you answered <laughs> okay. it, and I've seen schools that have been renovated. And they're beautiful and worked in one Pikesville High, Pikesville and I don't High recognize it at all. It, is, it was completely. Yeah. It is completely different yes. from when I worked. So there. those of you who may not have visited uh, Pikesville High, okay. thank uh, you. Take some time to visit that building, and it is no less than uh, uh, than any new building we have built. So. Uh, new mechanical system, new electrical system, air conditioning, uh, new finishes, lights, uh, and it's, it's like any new building. So uh, folks do not need to be concerned about whether it's a new building or renovation, it's going to be an outstanding product. And we say that based on our record for last 10 years. Thank you. Thank you. And I would just like to remind board members, because we do want to make sure that we get everybody's question in and end um, by five so we can go into close. So um, we are kind of loosely, but I'd like us as much as we can to say to our two minutes. So next we have Ms. Joe's, Mr. Offerman, and then Mr. McMillian, and then Ms. Rowe. Thank, Thank you. Pat, I also oh, um, I apologize, Ms. Hen. Yes, yeah, so Ms. Joe's. Mr. Offerman, Mr. McMillian, Ms. Hen, and then Ms. Rowe. And Ms. Scott, are we timing? Because I don't believe the previous speakers have adhered to the, the time limit. So I would ask that we- We were loosely timing. Time. I'm asking everybody to adhere to the time limits and do two minutes so that everybody has an equal opportunity to ask their questions. Okay, I would ask that we Thank liberally you, enforce Dixon. that. If you okay. Have not adhered. 
Thank you, ma'am. Yes, go ahead, Ms. Jones. Thank you. Mr. Dixit, you answered some of my questions um, when Ms. Pastor asked. I want you to, and I apologize if you already answered this, the impact of the renovation in the capital budget, and we're not talking about just two schools, but we're talking about 175 schools, and will the state penalize the county for changing a prioritization, and how will that impact cash flow? My second question is uh, the feasibility studies. Usually, typically, when I do feasibility studies done prior to design, um, is this a cost benefit analysis or is this just site analysis? What is the feasibility study based on? And um, thank you for elaborating on the fact that renovations are not always a bad thing. Um, an old building sometimes renovated is, especially if it's historical, is important. The Capitol building, the U.S. Capitol building is over 200 years old. So, you know, renovation as a civil engineer, I can assure you that the renovations that Mr. Dixit and BCPS has shown me have been world class and you get a lot of um, bang for your bucket. These are not a few million dollar renovations. They are multi-million dollar renovations almost as a new school. So thank you for, uh, because I think there is a misconception out there that renovation is going to be a band-aid and it's not really a band-aid. Correct? That's, so, that's true. All right. Thank you. So if you could answer the, the cost of the capital budget on changing renovations to replacements and how that would affect other schools. So I think I shared that earlier. You were not here. Uh, the the method of funding construction in the state of Maryland is complex. It's an extremely complex process. You need to understand it and use it to your advantage. Uh, state, in all our conversation with the state, they encourage preserving buildings. They encourage renovating buildings. And we are competing for state dollars throughout the state. There are 24 LEAs, and everybody wants a new building. Uh, every local elected official, every school board member wants to get a new school building for their constituent. So state is careful about, and in their guidelines, which are public knowledge, they require a feasibility study. And what that feasibility study says that if you replace a building and the, feasibil and the feasibility study indicates that it can be renovated, then they will only pay 60% of renovation minus 15% penalty for replacement of building. So I gave a hypothetical example. And if you take a building that is 120 million for a new, for a new school and 60 million for renovation, so for $120 million, we'll get 60% of 60 million minus 15% from state. The rest of the money, which is 60, 70 million uh, dollars, that will come from county. So we lose county funds, we lose, uh, we'll spend county funds for that school, which also are used to leverage additional state funds for future project. So a loss of 120 million dollars of county funds really means a loss of 240 million or 250 million dollars for our capital program. And those numbers, when you are talking about those numbers, those kind of high numbers, um, you are sucking the oxygen out of your capital program. That's what it happens. So that's one thing. The other, other thing that I want board to understand is county is our fiscal partner that helps us. The flexibility in capital program is handled by county folks, their fiscal folks. So the more they work with us, which they do, superintendent's team has established an incredible relationship with them. A lot of credit goes to Dr. Scriven. So that when we need funds, we get funds if the bids are higher. If we need to adjust project, we need funds from them. So do we really want to kill the goose that lays golden eggs for us all the time? And that's what the issue is that board to decide. And Thank you, Mr. Dix. Uh, I get it. And it's essentially, in layman's term, you're borrowing from Peter to pay Paul, and that's going to have an impact on other schools down the road. So thank you for explaining that. 
Thank you for that. Uh, next, it looks like after Molly, uh, we have um, Mr. Offerman. I've already spoken once, so let's let everybody else speak first. Sure, certainly. Uh, Mr. McMillian. Mr. Pete, I, I got a couple questions. In my travels, Towson High School wasn't a place I went to a lot, but when I went to it the last time, I noticed there had been a changes from the previous time I was in. When's the last time Towson High School was renovated and how much money was put into that school? I don't have that number offhand, but I can get that for you. If my memory serves me, it was in 90s that they renovated that building, but I don't have that in front of me. I can get that for you later on. Okay. And secondly, I'm looking at two different documents here, and, and it's, it, they're confusing. I'm looking at one document, and I can show it, that I can walk it over to you. January 19th, 2021, board approved, and it lists these county capital budget requests by priority order board approved in red. And then I'm looking at this other document that's August 10th, 2021, state capital budget request by priority order. There's a, there's a lot of differences between these two papers. And, and you are absolutely right. So let me try to explain that. Uh, the request that is here for approval is for state program, for Maryland state program. Last year's report is for county capital program. So county funds are slightly different. Priorities are different than state. What I do have is copy of last year's state program with your permission. I'll be more than glad to share that, and that might make it easy for you to understand. The reason we do that is because we want to give you a complete picture of where the money is coming. So it, let me pursue another question. So spares on the, on the county one that's dated January 19th, 2021, it, it, there's a $500,000, it's a line item number 21, Southeast Area High School. So there's $500,000, so that's county money. Absolutely right. Okay, and that's why it's not showing up on the state. That's okay. right. Okay, yeah. now at nowhere does spares point show up on the county or the state, and you yourself have mentioned Spares Point several different times during the course of this conversation. So that study that you just saw, 500,000, that is to look at the future options for Sparrows Point. So that's why it's not on the state when today. That's right. Once we know what we want to do, then we'll put it in the state for planning. Right now, we don't know what we want to do. Okay. And the purpose of that $500,000 that county provided to us is to look into it and find out the options for Southeast area. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, you've said to me before, it says Southeast area high, yes. but you have said, you've said to me that's not necessarily looking at a specific, you know, the building of a new high school or looking into a feasibility of a new high school. It's looking at the overcrowding in the entire Southeast area. Is that correct? It's, oh, it's to do with the future of Southeast area high school and middle school. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thanks. Okay, uh, next is Ms. Hen. Thank you. And real quick, to answer Mr. McMillian's question, um, the year that Towson was last updated was 1999. And I'm going to be sending a spreadsheet with some of that data. I don't have the um, exact cost on me, but Mr. McMillian, that's coming to you um, shortly. So I'll forward that information to you. Um, I, I was interested in that information as well, because Canon Design's equity scoring failed to take into consideration recent capital investment into all schools, um, including newer schools, that are now recommended to receive prioritized renovations and enhancements. In fact, in the last 20 years, 16 of 25 high schools have had major capital projects. Total capital investments in high school since 2001 has been approximately 571 million. 
of that, Towson has seen zero dollars capital spending since 2001, despite it being one of the oldest facilities with one of the worst facility scores and one of the most overcrowded schools in the county. In fact, if you look at the high schools and their capital spending, the three lowest in terms of capital spending are Towson, Ferris Point, and Delaney, um, the three schools that the board had prioritized for replacement um, based on conditions and seat needs, um, none of which are recommended based on my IPASS recommendations for replacement. So I'd like to understand why the disconnect also, going back to Ms. Mack's point, um, all seven of the scenarios in the SAGE study recommended Towson for replacement. It was never even an option that Towson would be renovated. Um, so I'd, I'd like to understand why all of a sudden it's acceptable to consider Towson for renovation um, given this and given the comments in the feasibility study. And I'd like to read a passage of this and Mr. Dixit to get your thoughts on it. Um, the feasibility study executive summary reads, for both option one and two, which are the renovations, the existing buildings will be structurally complicated to renovate as a result of the existing structural system. The 75-year-old docks, plank, and structural concrete mace steel frame system will require careful evaluation and will limit the placement of floor penetrating systems. Low floor-to-floor -floor heights in the existing classroom wings will not allow for a modern and code compliant mechanical system within a plenum space as they will result in lower ceiling heights and extensive bulkheads. Exterior walls do not meet current energy code requirements and will require extensive modifications. The option one and option two renovation additions are complicated by the need for the existing building to remain occupied and operational for the entire duration of construction. Option one, six phase schedule will take around five years to complete. Option two's five phase schedule will take around four and a half years to complete as compared to a much shorter um, construction schedule for replacement. Versus a replacement, which will allow for adequate floor to floor space for proper mechanical space. Roofs and exterior walls will be, would be designed to meet current codes Student circulation around the building would be improved. Again, this is with a replacement school. A centralized floor plan would provide better visibility, again, with a new school for faculty to monitor student activity. The option three replacement school would be situated on the site to allow continuous and uninterrupted occupancy of the existing building for the entire duration of the construction of the new building. And it would provide for a significantly shorter construction schedule. So that being said, the fact that Towson had already been slated for replacement, given the, the seat needs in the central area, the seat needs countywide um, within a few years, which had already been identified um, in 2018, which prompted the need for the high school capacity study. And given the condition of the building, why is is it considered acceptable now? And, and Mr. Dixit, I hear what you're saying. We have excellent renovations, but Towson has never been considered a suitable property for renovation. And given these concerns that have been identified by GWWO in the feasibility study, why all of a sudden is it acceptable to think that this property is suitable for renovation? So you have several comments and several questions in there. So let me see if I can answer your comments by comments and questions by questions. And if I miss anything, help me remember that. So your comments were different studies and SAGE study and all that. So let me remind you and some of the new board members that several years ago, it was this board or the board members here, some of them are here, that insisted that an independent study be done for long range planning. We supported it, county supported it, and uh, superintendent's team is very grateful to county for funding that study. The study was done by an independent architect, supported by one of the best uh, consultant uh, in Maryland uh, about school construction and the funding issues that go with it. 
Their finding is their finding. I'm not going to comment on that. If you have any questions on that, I'll be more than glad to send it to them and let them answer. All of the questions that were raised by board pertaining to my IPAS, the responses have been provided by them. I think that maintains the integrity of the process. The second part you had about the type of design and, and uh, why this feasibility study is indicating what it is indicating. So the feasibility study is a piece of paper, is a report which is developed by architect and engineers for architect and engineers in the state. State defines the qualification of architect, which is hired by board approved processes. And we send their report to state architects for their review. And it is not a board member or local elected official or even our team that decides whether this is the right conclusion or not. So based on that study, and based on life cycle costing of that, in their opinion, it is more economical uh, and cost effective to renovate that building. At any point during the design process, if we believe that they are not right, if and when we design, start design work on that, we'll come back to our fiscal partners and let them know that. It is our process that if our architects and engineers during the design process indicate that, oops, this is not right, you'll have to spend another $50 million in it, we'll go back to our fiscal partners, state and county, and we let them know and ask for additional funding for whatever the future course of action is. Did I answer all your comments and questions, please? Ms. Hen? Yes, thank you. I'm Okay. I don't think you can address that, and, and that's fair, Ms. But I don't believe you can address the opinion of the, the professional architect that recommended that Towson be replaced. The board can only base our um, judgment on the professionals who recommended that it be replaced. My last comment is... Okay. I'm sorry, Ms. Hen, your, your time was up, Ms. Hen. Oh, I didn't yeah. think that we could be liberal. We, we were being liberal. I'm, I was just hoping everybody would work together and be adults sure. and let everybody have have time and not yeah. um, take advantage um, and go over time. Um, there's some people who haven't even spoken yet, who like Ms. Rowe, who's been waiting patiently. And I just want to make sure that everybody who hasn't spoken has the opportunity and ample time. So, yeah, Mr. Mr. Kuhn has not spoken either. Would you, yeah. The previous board rejected the limited renovation for Lansdowne because it did not meet the community's needs based on facility okay. condition and the needs for a modern environment right. conducive to learning. Ms. Ham, we're going to have to, we're, we are going to have to wrap this up. I'm sorry, we do have to move on to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to speak. So um, our next person to speak is Ms. Rowe. So if you would like to go ahead, because I, I'm, I'm asking for everybody to be respectful. I'm hoping that we could be adults and we could um, govern ourselves and speak in a short amount of time, answer our questions, knowing that this is just the first opportunity. We will be revisiting it again at 930. So it's, it's, not, it's not over. So, I mean, please, Ms. Hen, if we could please allow some board members who have not opportunity to speak their two minutes to speak, because that is what's fair. So, Ms. Rowe, if you could Another please go ahead. If you could please go ahead, Ms. Rowe. Mr. Dixit. So about a year or so ago, I asked you a question about Patapsco High School and how there was various discussions about rebuilding that high school. And you indicated that one of the problems with that high school is that having just had a renovation, state funding for a new school is limited because they just had a recent renovation. And I would like to go back in time a little bit to about 2015, when four high schools were on the capital request for being rebuilt, and that was land, or for renovations, and that was Lansdowne, um, Delaney, and Woodlawn and Patapsco. And we heard all of the same arguments that you just made about renovations and how wonderful renovations are. 
advocates came to the board meetings explaining that the Pikesville renovation per square foot, if you compared it to these larger schools per square foot, would actually cost twice as much to do the renovations of those schools compared to Pikesville if you were to spend the same amount of money per square foot. The community had massive amounts of debate about the specific needs of those specific communities. And so what I would like to know is, given that the county council hasn't done anything with the APFO task force recommendations and development continues in the county, and the school system has no way of controlling over capacity of schools, stands the reason that my IPASS is gonna be obsolete within a few years if development continues on pace. And should we do renovations to these schools that are very old schools, have the lowest facility scores based on multiple studies? Um, I don't believe the IAC has ever said that those schools would be ineligible for new schools. That's something the county planning board has decided. And so what I'd like to know is, should we do renovations to these schools and someone says, oops, we made a mistake. Is it not true that they'll be in the same position that Patapsco's goes in right now and that they will not be able to have a new school be for 20 or so odd years because of the renovation? So in that case, a renovation does limit future options for at least 20 years. So you have a lot of questions in there. Let me try to answer one at a time. If you are building an addition to a school, even if it was renovated recently, and you have enough enrollments to justify, state will participate. So I don't know what you recall of our conversation. If we go back and ask for renovating that building and the same systems that we touched, then they will not fund it. But if we ask for addition and justify it based on enrollment, then they will fund it. So that's part one. The second question that you are asking the same question that was asked before, is renovation as good as new school? And I gave some examples. Uh, some of the renovation addition projects that we have done, they are in looks, in appearance, in meeting codes, in meeting educational program needs, are just as good as new schools. And I gave an example of uh, Catonsville Elementary School that we are very proud we gave another example of uh, Stonely that we are very proud of. And I can go on and on about the quality of work that was done in renovation. Pikesville High School is another high school. When you enter the building, it is no different than a new building. In terms of meeting its ability to, to meet the educational requirement, it is no different than a new building. And I would like to say that the life of that building is perhaps no different than a new building. And we, I have been part of renovation of historical building 45 years ago, and they are still there. And they are some of the most famous uh, buildings in, in the Baltimore area. So if we do it right, and our team has repeatedly proven that we do top class job, then the buildings will stay, and, uh, and, and you'll all be proud of that. So, Did I answer all your questions? So how is Patapsco High School and the community's dissatisfaction with the renovation they got that was supposed to meet all their needs the same as the Pikesville reservation, um, renovation, still unsatisfied with their school and calling for a new school? And I've been to that school, and it seems to me that reading the facility studies, they're fairly justified as much as many other very old buildings in wanting a new school. So. We've seen time and again in this county that when it comes to renovations, the renovations do not add to the uh, life cycle of the school what a new school would. And that communities uh, remain unsatisfied with the renovations. And in the case of Lansdowne, when a renovation was pushed for and studies, and even right down to plans being drawn up for a renovation of Lansdowne, it was very obvious that those, that renovation was going to be inadequate for the facility. And in looking at that situation, I don't see how that situation mm -hmm. is any different than some of our other high schools. Coming on time, Ms. Rowe. Thank you. So I feel like we're hearing the same thing as we heard before, except 
10 years ago. Now we have evidence that what was said 10 years ago is actually in fact not true. Why is it true today when it wasn't 10 years ago? So uh, I'm not sure what the question is, but I'll answer th thinking what the question is. Um, it was board's decision to reject Lansdowne's contract. Uh, there was nothing wrong in the proposed renovation, but if you reject the contract, we started all over. You do not need a feasibility study for a state if you are renovating. So we did not do any feasibility state for Lansdowne. Uh, the facts that we know do not support your statement that renovations are not as good as new buildings. Every renovation that we have done we are willing to compare with any new building that we built. So that's the fact that we know. And in case of Patapsco, we, we provided additional uh, spaces in form of black box theater, more than what was in the original document, if I recall correctly. So the issue they have is not the quality of renovation. Issue they have is they have more enrollment than what we could justify at that time. And what we are hoping in that Southeast study that could be of some help in providing relief to them and doing some other improvements. And we don't have the results of their study yet. Thank you. Um, next, next is, did I hear you, Mr. Kuhn? You have a question? I do. Thank you, Ms. Scott. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Dixon, thank you for your answers so far. I do need to revisit one thing, though. You were talking about the feasibility studies, and then you went, instead of actually looking at the feasibility study we have for Towson, you went on, talked about, um, you know, one that you made up. But I want to look at the actual comparative analysis of the- I'm audience. having difficulty yeah. listening to your question, so for the hearing challenge- no, I'm sorry, you could... I haven't asked my question yet. Okay. So, oh, yeah, we're just having a little trouble hearing you. <laughs> okay, so what I'm seeing are three options and we have sorry Russ we still can't hear you you can't hear me at all we can hear you now but you dropped out almost completely okay let me try and then that's not, good whatever listening. you're doing now works <laughs> okay great so there are three total life cycle costs here option one two and three and what I don't understand um, is, you know, option one and two are both for major renovations slash additions, and uh, they vary by nearly $30 million. And the second renovation actually is more expensive than a replacement school renovate, you know, 40 year life cycle cost. So if we showed this feasibility to the state, I don't quite see where we'd get penalized for building a new Towson High School. Uh, and then to move on from that, I'm looking also, and all, all we have are the executive summaries, so I apologize if there's more information that you have, but this is all I have in front of me. And I'm looking at the renovation options, and the building square feet are significantly different for option one, two, and three. Therefore, the costs are significantly different also. Uh, so. I'm, I'm concerned because we can't sit there and compare, you know, renovation one and two and three and, and replacement option three um, uh, because the square feet go from 295,000 square feet to 316,000 square feet and then a new school of 329,000 square feet. So I would expect the cost would be more for larger schools and I don't know how, um, unless we break it down on a per square foot cost, we could actually compare the total 40-year life cycle cost for those three options in a fair manner. So I bring that up because um, I, I was listening very closely to your examples before, and I pay attention to money. And I know that we have a limited tax dollars to spend. So I'm fully on board with that. But what I'm hearing from you is conflicting with what I'm looking at here in the feasibility studies, and I'm concerned. We're running up on time, Mr. Kuhn. Thank you. I understand that. Um, 
but I'm, I'm concerned that we're not getting a clear picture. So at this point, I guess we should just punt until 930, um, since uh, I don't think you're going to have any time to answer. Um, but I would, I would hope you take a closer look at that, at what I'm looking at, so we're clear that um, these feasibility studies that we're supposedly paying attention to and 40-year life cycle costs, that we could clearly articulate the why, why we're making a decision of replacement versus, um, I'm sorry, um, why you're trying to uh, move us along with the canon design of uh, renovation versus replacement. Thank you. Okay, and it looks like there was a question from Christian. No? Uh, no, my question's been answered. Okay, yes, and then Ms. Causey. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I had sent in emails earlier, Dr. Williams, about the um, transparency and the ability for board members to discuss documents that are not um, available to the public, especially the Lansdowne High School Feasibility Study, which was um, completed in June of 2020. Was that addressed earlier in the meeting? And I apologize, I was. When did you send those questions, Ms. Causey? Um, Were they, we had questions submitted by Friday, so they must have been sent after Friday. Is that correct? But it was. Yes, they were sent after Friday. Okay. Uh, yes, they were sent after Friday in response to the information that we received that said for internal use only. So no, it wasn't addressed earlier because it was received after Friday. Thank you. Um, let's be clear. This is a work session on the fiscal year 2023 state capital request. The board's responsibility is to ask questions, discuss options, and prepare to vote and finalize the state capital request on September 14th. This is not to debate nor improve the entire my iPass study and recommendations. That being said, due to my firm belief in policy 0100 and policy 0200 and my work on the board around equitable facilities for all students over the past six years, I do not support the MyIPass recommendation for reduction in scope for Delaney High School and Towson High School as renovations. Delaney High School and Towson High School have been approved by the board for replacement schools on state and capital requests since September 2017 based on well-known 2014 GWWO facilities condition report and longstanding capacity space deficits and other issues. Delaney High School and Towson High School are the last two high schools to have a plan implemented based on that study. My IPAS has transitioned from what the board requested in February 2019, funding for a 10-year capital construction plan, similar to the highly regarded plan used by Anne Arundel County Public Schools. Instead, the county commissioned the My IPAS study facilitated with BCPS. It's cost the county $1.16 million thus far. This is in addition to the almost $200,000 spent by BCPS on the SAGE High School capacity study, which included robust community engagement and resulted in possible scenarios, which were not implemented. Somehow, just recently, the My IPAS scope got expanded to an arbitrary 15 years with 175 schools squeezed in. It is unfortunate that some may use my iPass supplement A and B reports that are not yet publicly available to pit communities against each other, creating concern and fear with vague information about potentially deferred construction projects at least 15 years in the future, as outlined in those my iPass supplement A and B reports. As was pointed out, unless the county government adopts APFO task force recommendations and reforms for development, it will be an extreme challenge for anyone to predict the priorities 15 years out. In fact, neither BCPS nor Canon Design has completed an analysis of past projection accuracy by individual schools. BCP BCPS provided minimal aggregate data to the board. However, countywide aggregate projection analysis is meaningless to analyze the needs of an individual school's three, five, 10, much less 15 years. In the recently provided fiscal That's year timer. 2022 county capital budget request, January 19th, 2021, and the fiscal year 2023 state capital request, the current number of farm students at Delaney High School was understated as 18% instead of the actual 27.5%. This does not acknowledge the additional approximately 200 students that need additional supports due to socioeconomic disparities. I uh, sent that email to uh, staff and a request was made to correct that oversight. 
Additionally, uh, you're coming up on time, Ms. Causey. Thank you. So my question is, did that get corrected? And if not, did this uh, negatively impact the calculation of the equity score given to Delaney? Additionally, it should be noted that in uh, 2010, there were 85 BCPS schools without air conditioning. In 2020, there were only three schools without air conditioning. The supplement information A and B do not specify these 82 air conditioning projects completed in the last 10 years. Over 70 of them included central air, many with electrical upgrades. So a brief review. Of okay, the excuse me, Ms. Causey, it's time. It's Thank time. You. Yes. You so no, we have to. We we are I, I about just have to go my into. Final question. But we, it's time. You're over time. If you could wrap up, please, because we're yes. over time. Thank you. So the brief review on Supplement A and B that indicate the years without renovation are incorrect in just my cursory review for many schools. So is the Supplement A and B going to be updated with uh, the uh, full and accurate information about what schools have received funding and for what scope of projects? So I'm not sure if I understood your question. So if you can help me a little bit in understanding, I can answer it much better. And then we may have sure. to do that at 9.30 because we are at time and we need to go into our closed session. This report, uh, there's a page. Okay, excuse me. This. We are at time. Oh, we are okay. at time. So um, we need to now go into closed later. session. We can revisit that at 9.30 because Thank we are you. at time. I ask members to be respectful of the time, respectful of each other, to be adult, then govern ourselves, and that obviously is not possible. So now we will move forward. Thank you so much for that, and we will, I guess, see you all both and others at 9.30. Thank you. Thank you. So at this time, the board um, will conclude part one of the work session on the fiscal year 23 state capital budget request to go into closed session. May I have a motion to go into closed session as permitted by the Open Meetings Act as found in the Annotated Code of Maryland, General Provisions Article 3-305. Oh, excuse me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Madam Chair, do we just need to recess out of this open then until after closed? And then that will allow us so to yes. start the new meeting? Yeah. Okay, I'll start over. So at this time, the board will conclude part one of the work session on the fiscal year 23 state capital budget request to go into closed session. May I have a motion to go into closed session as permitted by the Open Meetings Act as found in the Annotated Code of Maryland, General Provisions Article 3-305, B1 and B9, to one, discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom it has jurisdiction or any other personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals and nine conduct collective bargaining negotiations or consider matters that relate to the negotiations so moved Matt is there a second second passed your Miss Gover may I have a roll call vote please yes 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 Yes. 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 Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.